All right, welcome to, I guess this is gonna be the first of two videos that I make um, for OpenStax Pre-Calculus Section 1.2. I decided to split it into two. In this video, I'm just gonna talk about interval and set builder notation. So just this first topic right here. Uh, the reason I'm splitting it into two is because I have a feeling that a lot of people already know this and just wanna focus on the new topics of this section. And then there'll be a lot of people that understand the topics of this section, but don't understand how to write their answer, don't understand interval and set builder notation. And so those people would just want this video. So rather than having to jump through the videos, I'll go ahead and make two separate ones. So again, this video talking about interval and set builder notation. So what interval and set builder notation is, is it's a way for you to express your answer, I guess, um, when your answer isn't just a single number or even a list, a finite list of numbers. So like if the answer is just three, you say X equals three if you're solving an equation for X, something like that. And if your answer is, oh, three and five, those both work, you'd say X equals three or five, or maybe three comma five, something like that. Um, but what if your answer has infinitely many numbers in it? What if your answer is an interval? What if, for example, I'm asked some question, and the answer to that question is all of the numbers from negative two up to positive one. And I don't mean negative two, negative one, zero, and one. I mean the infinitely many numbers in between there, the fractions, the decimals, all that kind of stuff. How would you write that? How would you express that answer? And what if it got even more complicated? What if you wanted to include negative two in your answer and you wanted all the numbers in between negative two and positive one, but you did not want to include positive one for some reason? Why would that happen? Well, that's gonna happen in 1.2. But for now, don't worry about why that happens. Let me just show you how you would write your answer if this picture right here represented your answer. And the answer to that question, the answer for your answer would be, well, you got options. You can use interval notation or you can use set builder notation. I prefer interval notation, frankly, so that's the first one I'm gonna do. The way you use interval notation is you look at your interval up here and you figure out what the lower bound is. In this case, the lower bound is negative two. And you figure out what your upper bound is. In this case, the upper bound is 1. So I want all the numbers from negative 2 to positive 1. So when I write interval notation, I'm going to write something kind of like this, although I'm not done yet. Because I need more stuff to indicate to the reader that I am including negative 2 in my set, but I'm not including positive 1 in my set in this specific example. So the way you do that is like this. We we'll use brackets to indicate that you are including that endpoint in the set and parentheses to include that you're not including that endpoint into this set. So when you see this written, you're thinking all of the numbers in between negative two and one, like negative 1.9999367, or 0 0.54, or three thirty seconds, or one, negative one, negative two, zero, all those numbers. But you're not including positive one, for example, or anything bigger than one, 1 1.4, or anything less than negative two, like negative 2.5 or negative seven. This right here means this picture up here. Um, let me give you another example of interval notation, and then I'll circle back and talk about how to express this set using set builder notation. So I'll draw you another number line and make this one a little bit crazier. This one, I want all of the numbers that are less than negative four. And let's see, let's go ahead and include negative four in that set and everything that's less than it. So all of these guys out here but there's really no endpoint over here. It goes on forever, so I'll kind of even highlight this arrow. But then I'm not done, I want more stuff, so I don't know, negative one maybe, up to, sure, positive, how about just negative one up to zero? And then maybe I don't wanna include either of these guys. So it looks like that. And I'm still not done, uh, let's call this two, and say I want everything not including two, Mix this up a little bit, up to infinity. This is a weird set right here. But we're going to learn how to express this, negative 4, negative 3, 2, 1, 0. I'll just kind of label the numbers that are, I'm going to label all the numbers, why not? Not all of the numbers, but all of the whole numbers um, in between here. So you have this picture right here. I kind of talked through what numbers we're talking about. How in the world would you write this in interval notation? Well, we really have three different intervals, right? Here's one of them, here's another one, here's another one. So really I'm gonna have to write three different of these things. Well, this first one's a little bit tricky, right? This Maybe you could do this middle one already. Maybe you could say that all the numbers from negative one to zero, well, the lower bound would be negative one and the upper bound would be zero. And since I don't wanna include either of those two endpoints because of the open circles here, 
means I want parentheses. It's perfect. These are represented by this. But what about these guys on the outside? This one doesn't have a lower bound. Well, okay, what you do when you don't have a lower bound is I'll say from negative infinity. It's supposed to be the infinity sign. It's a little bit hard to write on a computer. Negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. Note that I'm going to put the brackets here because I do want to include negative 4 in my set. And I don't have a lower bound, so I'm going to say it kind of goes forever. I'm going to use this negative infinity to represent to the reader that I want all of the numbers less than or equal to negative 4. And then this kind of looks weird leaving it open like this, right? I should probably put a parenthesis or a bracket here. So the question becomes, do you want to include negative infinity in your set? And that's actually a really deep question, and it's super interesting, and you get some higher level math there. But for our purposes, I'm going to tell you, you never include infinities or negative infinities in your sets. For this, for our purposes, for this level of math, we're never going to include infinity or negative infinity in our set, hence this parenthesis right here. The way you can think about it at this point is negative infinity is not a number. At least it's not a real number. Um, it's a concept. And so I can't include it in my set. I just want to use this to tell the reader that I don't ever want to stop. I want numbers as far negative as possible, something like that. Uh, similarly up here, you might be able to guess that this one, we'd end up with everything from 2 up to positive infinity. Note, I do not want to include the 2, and I never include the infinity, so this would look like this. Couple of comments. Um, this looks like a bunch of different things. How do you indicate to the reader that all three of these are what you want? That you want the numbers that come from this interval, or from this interval, or from this interval? Well, there's a way to do it, and with interval notation, the way you do it is with the big capital U. That U stands for union. It's the union symbol. And so the way this reads is all this, this interval, union with this interval, union with this interval. Uh, one more comment on interval notation, maybe a couple more comments on interval notation. This interval, if it was written all by itself, negative 1, 0, looks a lot like a point, like an ordered pair, like an xy pair, like the point where x equals negative 1 and y equals 0. So it's important that you provide some context with your answers so that the reader understands what you're talking about. Fortunately, it'll, pretty, it'll be typically be pretty obvious whether you're, whether you're talking about a point or an interval of values. Um, so you won't have to worry about that too much, just passing that on. Uh, the other thing is be really careful with the order you write these in. You always want to write the lower bound and then the upper bound. So you could not write this set. This is not everything from 1 to negative 2. Logically, they might seem equivalent, right? I'm in including this endpoint and I'm not including this endpoint and I want everything between 1 and negative 2. That's true. But the standard way of writing things in interval notation is you always start with the lower endpoint, and the lower endpoint is negative 2, the lower bound. So I don't want to write the upper bound first. I think that's everything I got on interval notation. So what I'm now going to do is circle back and give you answers to these two ways to represent these two sets of numbers uh, using what's called set builder notation. So interval notation, you write it like this, set builder notation. So a lot of weird mathematical things. The first thing is you write these squiggly brackets, which are kind of a pain just to write. Um, when you write squiggly brackets in math, that means the set of all. So instead of writing out in English, the set of all x values, so that my x is between negative 2 and 1, but including negative 2. And you could write that in English, but that would be kind of a mouthful, and it would take you forever. Uh, so mathematicians developed a whole bunch of shorthand. And the way you write the set of all is by putting in these squiggly brackets. So I want the set of all x values, so I'm just going to write x right here. x is just kind of a placeholder, it's just a variable, just so I'm talking about something. The set of all x such that my x is between negative 2 and positive 1. Again, I could in English write out the words such that. Some authors do that, they write out such that, very few, because that would be not very efficient. Um, some authors will write s dot t to abbreviate such that. Um, what your book uses for such that is just this vertical line right here. Another thing that's used in place of this is a colon. You'll see that written in other texts sometimes, but your text uses a vertical line like this, so that's what I'm going to use. So right now, this reads the set of all x values such that. So now I just have to describe my criteria. And my criteria is that the x has to be between negative 2 and positive 1, but I want to include negative 2, and I don't want to include positive 1. So I'm going to say my x is between negative 2 and positive 1, but I do want to include negative 2, and I do not want to include positive 1. So in set builder notation, you write this set as this. And the way you would read this is it's a set of all x such that negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 1. 
uh, set builder notation. Your book kind of implies that there's a third way you can write it. Um, and the third way would just be with inequality. So just this portion of the set builder notation, it's kind of shorthand for set builder notation. But my thought on that is that if you can write set builder notation, you could erase all this stuff if you felt like it, and you could write this as kind of a shorthand. So I'm not going to bother teaching you that because you kind of have to know that in order to use set builder notation. So that's what you get here. So how in the world would you use set builder notation in some crazy example like this down here? Well, let me show you. What we're going to do is we're going to set up three different sets, just like I set up three different intervals here. And in each case, I'm going to say the set of all x such that. My criteria here is that x has to be less than or equal to negative 4. There's my first set. Uh, my second set is I want the x to be between negative 1 and 0. You're like, oh yeah, and you put the union in between, right? No, your book doesn't anyways. We're going to use unions only when we're talking about interval notation. And when we're in set builder notation, we're going to use the word or. Fine. The set of all x such that x is less than or equal to negative 4, or the set of all x such that, now I want to represent this union here, my value of x has to be between negative 1 and 0. And note that I do not want to include negative 1 or 0. So I'll write it like this. And then I have this third set. So I'll put or again. And I'll say the set of all x such that. And now it looks like my x value is greater than 2. Note that uh, it's not greater than or equal to 2 because I do not want to include 2. If you wanted to write 2 is less than x, you could. I think this is a little bit more um, logical to write x is greater than 2. Although everything before I've been using the less than or the less than or equal to sign and here I switched to the greater than sign. Uh, but that's the way I would write these in interval and set builder notation. So there's a quick summary of how to use those two notations. Uh, hopefully if you can do these two examples, you could do any examples that you would need to. So I'll stop this video here.